Welcome again. The content on economic evaluation and economic feasibility analysis will be divided in two lectures. First, we will discuss the key concepts and principles, including how to calculate the fixed cost. Then, in the next lecture, we will continue with variable cost, financial indicators, and sensitivity analysis. This is all part of uh, step four assessment and analysis. And later this week, we will cover the environmental, social, and integrated sustainability assessment. But first, let's understand why process economics is important. The intuitive answer is to know if our bioprocess is economically feasible or not. But we can go deeper and identify the main cost contributors, which could be, for example, capital assets related to physical equipment, building, and uh, installations. Raw materials like feedstocks, utilities, and consumables, and other costs related to design, implementation, and uh, operation. We can also calculate several financial indicators that are commonly used for decision making. Let's take a look at the cost composition. For a bioprocess facility with a specific plant capacity, we can first account for the fixed cost, which depends on the acquisition and installation of capital goods. These are known as the capital expenditures, CAPEX. Then the variable costs depend on the plant operation and on the actual production outcome. They are known as the operating expenses, OPEX. In this way, for an industrial bioprocess facility that is built at a given plant capacity, the fixed costs do not change with the production scale regardless of the actual outcome of the products, since the investments have already been made. Be aware of the differences between the plant capacity and the production scale. The former refers to the size at which the facility was built and the latter refers to the actual outcome of products. In the case of the variable cost, they do change proportionally with the actual production scale um, since more raw materials, utilities and labor are needed for a larger production. And combined, they make up the total production cost. Revenues refer to the monetary value obtained from the sale of products and profit is the difference between revenues and the total production cost. Taxes are applicable on profits and the remaining part is the margin. Please notice that for low production levels, profits could be negative, meaning losses, since the revenues are insufficient to cover production cost. And the production scale, where the total production costs are just equal to the revenues, is called the break-even point, where profit is zero. The total capital investment is a one-time expense for the design, construction, and startup of the plant, and this is highly dependent on the total equipment cost, in particular on the total bare purchase equipment cost, CPE, in the table which refers to cost associated to the design and construction of the uh, process units. Keep this parameter in mind since it is key to estimate the total capital investment. Additional equipment related costs are auxiliary units and installation expenses. Where direct and uh, depreciable investments are related to utilities, services, uh, site preparation, among others. The total capital investment can be calculated from the sum of the total depreciable uh, capital and the oil investment cost, which in turn depends on the total direct permanent investment and the total installed equipment cost. These different contributions can be calculated as factors of the total bare purchase equipment cost. We can finally aggregate all of these factors to calculate the capital, uh, the total capital investment as the function of the total bare purchase equipment cost. This aggregated value is known as the land factor, and it depends on the type of materials handled in the process, either solids, fluids, or both. The total bare purchase equipment cost is calculated as the summatory of the bare equipment cost of the individual process units. Once the total capital investment is calculated, we need to distribute the present value of such initial investment along the lifetime of the project uh, for the correct accountability of costs, profits, and cash flows, and this should be done in a yearly basis. This is possible through the depreciation of capital, which accounts for the decline in the value of equipment due to general use. 
the equation shown in the slide is a straight line depreciation which is estimated as a constant annual value along the project lifetime and the term annual interest rate corrects the value of money over time. Now, data for the individual per equipment cost uh, can be retrieved from, uh, from a wide range of uh, sources. Textbooks on uh, post design and economic evaluation usually have uh, a combination of figures and uh, correlations for multiple processing equipment where you can directly read the equipment cost as a function of one or more char characteristic uh, size factors like the heat transfer area for a heat exchanger as you can see in the example and also based on some design specifications like materials, pressure or equipment configuration. Our sources of information are online databases, which are usually more updated. More examples on such websites are available in the additional materials of this course. Scientific and technical reports on techno-economic evaluations are also viable sources of information. However, in the later case, we may find equipment costs that are valid for a different capacity, usually smaller. In that case, we can apply the cost-capacity relationship which describes the behavior of the economy of scale, meaning that a process unit can be scaled up at an additional fraction of the original cost. This relationship gives good estimates for both individual equipment and entire plants, as long as the different process units can be scaled up rather than duplicated from, uh, for a parallel operation. The average value of the exponent m has been reported as 0.6 and this is why this is known as the six tenths rule. In this case, if the capacity factor doubles, the cost increment is 52%, but if the capacity factor triples, the increment would be 93%. Those increments in the capacity factor should still be realistic. Let's come back to the difference between the plant capacity and the production capacity. The economic model discussed so far refers to a plant of a given capacity and the actual production uh, scale is any scale between zero and the plant capacity. But if we want to consider a larger plant capacity, the capital expenditures per unit of pro produced can be reduced as described in the principle of the economy of scale. Another important aspect when retrieving information on equipment costs from multiple sources is that data would most likely uh, refer to different years. For a consistent economic evaluation, we should update this data to the same time point. To do so, we can use the Chemical Engineering Plant Cost Index, which is regularly updated and describes how the purchase costs have changed over time. As part of our uh, economic evaluations, we might also be interested in comparing different international sites, and for that we can use uh, location factors which depends on the local e economy, uh, labor, uh, transportation costs, taxes, and uh, currency exchange rates. Um, with this information, we are ready to calculate the fixed cost, total investment, and depreciation in a systematic and consistent manner. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next lecture for more on economic evaluation.